All good? Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today for our first uh, mobile session. There will be a lot more coming today, but uh, I have the pleasure to kick it off. My name is uh, Tina Unterländer. I oversee everything mobile at AKQA. Um, really work with all of our clients to help them guide the mobile waters. Um, really understand, you know, anything from strategy to execution to uh, really uh, supporting all of their different uh, campaigns. And what I thought I'll do today is really um, give you a little bit of an overview of where we've been and where we are right now and where we will go in the future. So, as you can see, I chose the title Corn, Oil, and Mobile. And I'm not sure, um, you know, what, if, if you kind of understand what I'm trying to do here, but if you think about corn and oil are really massive industries. Uh, we are touching products and eat products and drink products that we will not have a day, no 24 hours that we will not touch any thing that is coming from these industries. And I do believe that mobile will grow into such a massive industry where we will not have any day where we can you know, live without our mobile phone, which I think is already happening, but I think it's taking inroads into even deeper and deeper parts in our lives. And so uh, that's kind of the, the journey I wanna take you on today. And here's just a quick, quick overview. So what a ride we've had. Um, if you think about it, mobile has been around for quite a while. It's actually 38 years ago when the first cell phone call has been made. So it's not just you know the most recent stuff when the iPhone came out and everybody started thinking even deeper and, and more, more about mobile in that sense, but uh, we've been on that ride for quite a while. And then, as I said, I'll talk a little bit about what's going on right now and then hopefully uh, with that lead into what's going on and will be going on in the future. So today we'll have a conversation about some of the most significant changes in the way we use the, uh, the internet. And if you look at it where we came from with you know, the World Wide Web creation and uh, the mobile web, they were quite separate for quite a while, but I think that has dramatically changed and we're now at a stage where um, we have to basically, as advertisers, relearn how to approach how we talk to our consumers, how we use mobile um, in smart ways, and uh, how do we really connect brands to the actual consumers. Mobile phones were initially created for people to speak to one another, one conversation at a time, and I think now we're entering kind of the stage of perpetual change. Like it's really, by the week, we have new purposes, new scopes, new features on our phone, um, and we're just trying to keep up with what is actually going on and how we can really make use of this really smart device. Looking at the last 25 years of mobile, if you think about in less than a lifetime, mobile has transformed the society with an impact equivalent to television, to electricity, to autos, to um, anything you can think of, uh, like oil and corn, for example. And if you now look at what has happened here, so if you think about it, Europeans don't really agree on much, but they did agree to create the first global mobile network with GSM. Um, and, if, and if there's something, you know, with wireless, there's usually always Germans involved, and so uh, Friedhelm Hillebrand was the first one to actually send an SMS on the phone. And then going down the road, uh, Motorola plants basically to seat what would become today Foursquare with uh, you know, like every other mobile social network, every other social mobile network that is based on geolocation. So when they created the IDEN network, it's quite 
similar to what we have today. It was kind of the first thought leadership in that direction. And then who started this, this picture trend anyway? It was a Swiss guy, Philipp uh, Kahn. And then in 99, um, Docomo was actually the first carrier to really untether the web with their iMode solution. And then if you all remember the, the start of American Idol and how we all started voting actually for our favorite singers, um, that's really when sidecar usage of mobile was born, that you actually integrate mobile with other media in that sense. And it really took off. Um, yeah, and then in 2008, Apple changes the world again. And I wonder how many more times that will happen um, in our mobile future. People are doing lots of things on their mobile device, billions of things. These are just a few things to keep in mind what will come or is already happening right now. Most massively popular mobile apps have, e have been even either focusing on entertainment, news, weather, and social networks. And that was only the beginning. New functionalities of all types will create a second immense search in mobile content. And as you can see here, we're really, really only starting out. So just imagine what will happen with you know, most technology breakthroughs. There will be a true, true exponential increase, as you can see in the chart. And for the purpose of this specific presentation today, I thought I'll really focus on macro trends that really impact our natural human behavior. So it's, it's amazing that after such a short period of time, mobile is set to become the most dominant media that we've ever known. And if you look at the average time spent on, on mobile screens, uh, it has already surpassed, actually, if you look at billboards, newspapers, and magazines. And as said before, we're really only just at the beginning. It took the web 10 years to actually go from one hour time spent per day to two hours time spent on the web today. And just with what the little things we know so far about mobile, you can only imagine how much faster we will get to that point in much less time. And I briefly talked about sidecar usage. And if you think about what I mean by that, it's truly using mobile within all of those other media channels. And if you think about that, you, know, you use it with you know, QR codes, text messaging, location-based services, or social and other mobile apps, you can only imagine how this fuel the rise in the future. Let me pull those all up. Oh. OK, a little trouble here. Um, many items that were considered, hold on, one, two, is that all? Yeah, sorry. The power of mobile devices is increasing at faster cycles, as discussed before. Um, and I mean, if you think about it, it has been barely a year since the iPad was launched. And there's a second iPad already in market that is better, newer, different, with more features. And I think we're going through the same kind of transitions in the mobile space and have been going through that for quite a while. But we're increasing with that. Turnaround or, or people are switching mobile phones. Back in the days, it was like at least 24 months. Now we're talking about 12 to max 18 months where people turn over phones. So just if you think about it, we're, we're expecting to head this year where we get rid of a lot of the feature phones that a lot of people still have um, and moving into the smartphone space, we'll definitely see a whole new um, space that opens up, especially for brands. 
and marketers to reach the consumer on their terms. So if you think about it, if you look at all the things that a mobile phone does today for us, when was the last time you actually pulled out a photo book or a photo album to share with your friends? Or when was the last time you actually pulled out an actual photograph out of your wallet to share with your friends? I don't remember, maybe you do, but that's kind of where we're heading. Or think about, just imagine your kids they want to borrow your car, and instead of asking you for the car keys, they will actually just take out their phone, bump their phone with your own phone, and then because they're part of your car group, you will allow them to open the car, to drive the car, to lock the car, because it's just all part of the ecosystem that they allowed you to be part of. So if you think about that, the phone itself is bigger than all of the features that it has. So these are the, the macro mobile trends that I would like to talk with you about today. And with these macro trends, they have created uncertainty, resulting in a little chaos for a lot of brands out there. Um, and what we're trying to do, obviously, is really helping with the knowledge we have as marketers to help the brands really navigate this chaos that has been created by those trends. So if you think about it, we have searching up here, we have rating, we have buying, and we have reporting. So I think you all remember the most recent uproar in Egypt, in Tunisia, and also Libya and how people are using their mobile devices to report on actual life events. They're using those devices to get people, rally people together, you know, share it with the world what's going on, and basically ask for help in, in some form or, or shape. Then there's the socialization of everything. Everyone in the world becomes connected to everyone else. It's fairly common for you know, the younger generation, but I think even, even my parents are starting to pick up on certain things like that. And then there's commerce, which is literally the, the lifeblood of every society on Earth. And I think with mobile application, it has finally transformed into something that we have to better understand. So let's dive deeper into some of these trends. So if you look at the, the check-in craze, which is pretty bizarre for people born before 1975, um, who wants everyone to know where I am at all times? Apparently, lots of people. Who needs to take a picture and actually enjoy the picture before you, know, you shared with the rest of the world. Apparently fewer people than you think, especially with the, with the increase and, and uh, penetration of instant photo sharing from Instagram to easy posting on Facebook um, and other social networks. Just imagine how we have changed what, we was, so what was so close and, and dear to us of you know, our privacy and our very personal lives we definitely became much more open and with a very quick click to share a lot of our things that nobody would have ever imagined with the world rather quickly. And I think you know, the self-reporting of all kinds of activities is really a permanent change in our society and we just have to understand and fairly, you know, live with it. Real-time information distributed directly to each individual person um, is key here. Massive industries will be disintermediated as you know, information brokers. And mobile application or any kind of mobile service will actually connect the consumer directly to the source of the information itself. So just think about it. 
your vital signs sent to you know, the doctors or the institutions that need to know. Sports, what's the latest score? What is going on? Attendance, if you think about it, you know, there's a lot of schools that are now starting. Um, we've, see, we've seen it in Japan, we're seeing it trickling in here. It's all about reporting, understanding where my kids are at any moment in time. And then, as said before, if you think about what has happened very, most recently all over the world, um, it's all about reporting life events, sharing what's going on, and you know, in that sense really opening it up to a whole lot of people to participate. Let's move on to rating. Everybody has an opinion now. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. Their opinions on hotels, on toys, on neighborhoods. I even saw an app recently where you can rate public parking garages. So you know which ones to avoid. There's really anything you can possibly imagine um, is out there. And I think it is really important for businesses to start paying attention to what people are saying about them everywhere. If you look at individualized ratings, it's basically all about what people like or dislike. And with that, we will really receive an ocean of data that we can use, smartly or not, um, for you know, really shaping what and how we are approaching and working in the mobile system. Today, subtle games and ego appeals encourage people to simply check in on Gowala or review on Yelp or like something on Facebook. And tomorrow, people will reflexively just simply read everything they do, everything they go, everywhere they go, wherever they inhabit something, um, people they engage with, just imagine all the ratings that are already happening and will happen in the future. All of our decisions soon, if they're not already, will be made by the statistics that we read or see from either other people's ratings, my friend's ratings, um, doesn't matter anymore if it's uh, anonymous or if it's my closest friends. It's really, this will drive us. And if you think about it, in that sense, authority is dead. We don't listen anymore to, I shouldn't say not listen anymore at all to brands, but think about where we're getting our information from and how we do make decisions today. And it's important to understand that, especially if you're working with a lot of different and humongous brands in that, in that regard. So instead of arguing, basically, with somebody at the front desk about my experience in the hotel, I will actually just go out on either Hotels.com or TripAdvisor and share my opinion with the whole world. And I think in the last year or two, especially the travel industry has picked up on that trend and is focusing now more on direct responses, understanding what people are rating, where people are rating them, and you know, understanding how actually their fortunes are shaped by what users are saying about them. <coughs> Search. Search has changed. If you think about it, first, we flipped open a phone book to find things, to find people, to find companies. Now. We open an app, and the things that we're looking for are actually finding us. What people are looking for or searching for has dramatically changed. Now people search to buy or borrow a car, actually, for two hours. I'm not sure how familiar you are with Zipcar, but you know, I pull open my app, I look where the car is available, I see statistics on my screen, and I make my reservation. If you think about it, a few years ago, it was only the nice old lady behind the Avis counter who could let me know what is available and where. 
And if you take this even further, now you enter preferences in your settings, and as I said, your product finds you. You can track down personalized items and have them sent to you. You can basically reserve almost anything from your phone. If you think about open table, you make a reservation for a restaurant. Then to Sipcar, where you can basically make a reservation for your car. All the way up to, I don't know if you're how familiar you are with rent a runway, to get your dress ready for the next event that you have upcoming. Then, if you look at some of the, if, if you look at the supply searches, which have changed dramatically. I was just recently on a trip um, in Germany, and I knew my medication was running out. It was so easy to just pull up my app in Germany with my Walgreens prescription on it. I was able to refill it, and the moment I set foot in the U.S. again, I was able to pick it up, let them know exactly what pharmacy I would be closest to, and everything was very seamless. And just imagine what will happen in the future when actually maybe the package itself will tell you you're running low and giving a shout out to the actual pharmacy to have it ready at all times. But then I'm, I'm a lover of champagne and wine.com really helps me to locate my favorite champagne brand, where it is, when it's available, for an easy pickup. I think it's a whole new world of search and it's no longer about searching just for websites anymore. We're searching for all kinds of products and that's just part of a very basic human behavior. It's not something that is new, it has been around for quite a while and uh, I think mobile is really here to help us make our searches more precise, more useful, more efficient and we will continue to use it in bigger, broader ways. Let's move on to the buying side of things. You know, creating a profile on any e-commerce site is now fairly simple and easy. If you look at Amazon, the largest uh, online retailer in the digital world, who lets you buy things with a few touches. I'm not sure how many of you are using one-click buy, but my bookshelves did fill up rather quickly with an easy way of just snapping up any kind of book that I either see on the go or somebody tells me about. It's easy to just pull out my app and just with one click, I know in a few days it will be in my mailbox. And I think those apps will get a whole lot smarter in the future. If you think about you know, eBay, Amazon, and iTunes, who really have taught us how easy it is to buy also now through the mobile device. I'm not sure if you've seen actually the statistic lately uh, of eBay and how much money they actually make on mobile phones itself. And very recently we also looked uh, or dove a little deeper into that and it was interesting that people were actually also willing to buy Ferraris on their mobile phone. So on average, and that's really a statistic that I, I just recently read, there are two to three Ferraris that are bought via your mobile phone on eBay every month. So we're here, we, we have to understand and just live with that and move forward and help our brands move into that space as fast as humanly possible. And then if you think about it, with all the hype around um, RFID coming, near fuel communication is here, new phones will have those chips implemented. In the future, we will just simply wave, tap, or bump our phone, and we'll buy stuff. We don't have our wallet anymore, we don't pull out our credit card anymore. It's really all in our phones, and I think Japan has really shown us the way and we're not too far away from moving into that direction. And then if you think about it, gone are the days of the big wallets. I don't know about you guys, but having countless credit cards, your loyalty cards from anywhere from your grocery store to your favorite retailer to your airline, 
to your hotels, to your rental cars. Then you have the gift cards that are you know, cluttering up your wallet. If you just imagine what you could do if that would be all in a phone and all you need to carry around are a few little items. I think that's where we're heading. And uh, if you look at, at some of the examples, um, mobile ticketing is another good one that is growing uh, at tremendous speeds. And I think the next generation after us will not even understand what will call is anymore. The whole concept of picking up actually paper tickets will be something that they've never heard of. And that's the direction we will be going. And then uh, the other day, I was, uh, I was at Home Depot. And I saw there's kind of a two, kind of a two society line now at the checkout counter. So on the one hand, you have the very digital savvy line where you just walk past the cashier, you check out your own items, you choose how to pay for it, and you leave. And then obviously there's still the line for the people who do like the comfort of a cashier, who does exactly the same. And I think what will change in the future with that is that potentially those digital checkout lines will only accept mobile payments, and by doing so, the items might be even cheaper, and you might be even pay less. And the people who don't use mobile phones and don't receive their coupons on their phones, they will be the ones who will be paying full price and paying for the cashiers that are still there. Just a little thought um, to keep in mind what might be happening in that space. Mobile is anything and anything is mobile, which is kind of my topic today. So if you think about it, corn is almost in everything we touch. It kind of gives a new meaning to you are what you eat. And if I look around in the audience, you all look like a stack of corn, corn stacks, basically, right now. Because I bet you none of you in the last 24 hours was able to avoid anything that had to do with corn. Oil is part of almost everything we use. You can't go fishing, you can't open an umbrella, and you can't even brush your teeth without using something that was made. Oh, I'm losing my, sorry about that. So as I said, you can't even brush your teeth without using something made from oil. And to be honest, that whole toothpaste thing freaked me out a little bit. And then if you look at the future of, of mobile and where we're heading with this, I think you won't say mobile milk or RFID carton. It's really more about the fact that you won't even consciously think about that the fact your milk is communicating with your fridge about its expiration date, about its um, amount that is still left, about where the milk came from, what grocer it came from. And then, when they're done talking about that, they will might send you a message and your grocery store at the same time to make sure on your next trip, you're actually picking up the milk that you're missing in your fridge. And if you think about it, this whole chain, what's going on there, so your milk talks to your fridge, and your fridge gossips about you to the grocery store, that's just what it will be. And your voice, uh, and your mobile phone actually will become this little voice in your head that helps you navigate your life. And here's some, some thoughts, uh, you know, further about what could happen in the future. 
I think like standalone check-in services will disappear into mainstream brands. And what I mean by that is basically the check-in is your shout out to your social graph. The check-in is potentially your payment. The check-in is you know, a whole lot more things that we haven't even imagined today. And then looking at the vacuum cleaners. Do you remember the last time you would actually vacuumed your apartment? I think in the future, appliances of all kinds will know who you are, will understand when they have been last used by you to then give you a shout out or a reminder to actually use them again. And guys, if you think your wife nags you, just wait until your appliances track you down via your mobile phone. And then the last example um, I'm a big sports fan, so come with me on that. Uh, it's really about right now we have apps that support us already with a lot of things. But just imagine when we get to the point where your tennis racket, your shirt, your pants, your shoes are potentially talking to you about your exercise you've just completed, about your metabolism, about the temperature, about anything that has, is connected to what you've just done and all within your mobile application to help you either live healthier, become a better athlete, and you know, kind of becoming your personal trainer in this little device that we have all in our pockets. <laughs> and then I am, even after all the things I've told you just now, I am still working in the advertising world. So here are some examples of what the road ahead might look like. I think digital campaigns will fundamentally change. And I picked two examples to give you kind of an idea of what I mean by how digital campaigns could be changing. So for instance, if you're checking in at a sports event, that might actually result in a slew of different messages from you know, loyalty to location to buying and to benefits for the consumer. So just imagine you're at the US Open, you check in on your Nike app, and Nike will let you know the closest Nike places around you and feature specific products that if you buy within the next 24 hours and you visit one of those stores, you might get actually a huge discount. Just think about how you can turn and combine and use all of the features that are out there today in a smart way. Or if you look at this, right now we have a lot of apps that surround us that will inform us about um, upcoming birthdays, for example. So just imagine you would download the Michael Kors app that might be promoted on their website or in their flagship stores or uh, on hang tags with other retailers. You download the app, you go around, you scan the, the actual barcodes of the Michael Kors products that you like. And with one click, you can actually publish your wish list to your friends, to your social graph, to your relatives, and then whenever your birthday comes up, they automatically will see your wish list. So it's not just anymore just your birthday is coming up, but they see your wish list and how great would it be to finally not get gifts anymore that you don't need and you don't want. So just a, a, you know, one way of actually using some of the technologies that are out there and combining it smartly with social networks and obviously with a lot of mobile things. So if you think about brands, retailers, pretty much everybody out there want to have a direct dialogue with the actual consumer. And mobile is really the place where this can occur. And of course, 
you won't remember everything I told you today because usually people remember 10% of what they've heard, 25% of what they've seen, and 50% of what they've actually physically done. And here are basically the 10% I want you to remember from today's presentation. R, S, B, R. Search, buy, rate, and report. Massive industries, as said before, will be disintermediated as mobile applications connect people directly to the source of information. Rate, search, buy, and report are the macro trends based on human behavior that will drive this revolution. And if you look what's happening now already and how we will continue in the future, mobile has finally arrived. And I think these are just a few examples where we are and where we're using mobile today in a very heavy way. So that's actually it for me for today. I wanted to give us a little bit of time for questions that you might have. I will also provide this presentation on SlideShare so everybody can access it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them. Yes, Craig. Um, that's a, pardon me? Oh, so Craig asked if uh, I could talk briefly about what are the trends we're seeing by location and how they might vary if you look at Asia versus Europe versus even the developing world uh, and what's going on here in the US. I think what we've seen, um, especially over the past, uh, I want to say, past three years, um, the U.S. was always deemed as the one that has a lot of catching up to do, which I believe we have done. We're leading the pack in, in various disciplines like mobile advertising, um, mobile media, mobile usage in, in a great many ways. Uh, mobile applications, that rise of mobile applications definitely was extremely powered by our friend Steve Jobs, who enabled more open guidelines and, and open environments for us to develop mobile applications. Looking at across the pond and, and in other uh, areas, I think um, Asia has been leading the pack in many, many disciplines from mobile payments to location-based services to using actually to your phone to start a car to open actually your home door. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet with Docomo uh, a few, even a few years back already now, and they showed me the technology where you can actually, when you're not at home, but your friend arrives maybe early, you can send them a virtual key to actually open your apartment door. So I think these kinds of, and these types of applications, um, it won't take long until we see them here as well. Um, and then what is even more interesting and fascinating to me, are actually what's happening in, in the developing world because they are actually ahead with a lot of the technologies that they actually offer in regards to banking, money transfer, really fulfilling some of the most fundamental needs in those countries and we have a lot of catching up to do in that regard. So I think there's definitely a divide um, across the globe uh, but we're, we're, I think we're all coming closer together. Yes? Hi, I'm Nancy from Evan Post Valley Bank. I have two questions. One is there's a pretty significant increase in payments for iPhones through the month of September for every company. So I'd like to hear you know, how you think about that in terms of the next month and forecast that. Then on the other side of the pond here in the United States, there's 10 bills currently in circulation in Congress regarding consumer net privacy. Privacy, yeah.
-hmm. Right. So the, the two questions basically here are around privacy, and obviously there's a lot going on around in, uh, you know, in our government. Uh, lots of bills are being passed around right now. Um, and the second was around uh, money fraud um, in that regard. So money fraud, I admit I'm not from the payment side of things, so um, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to answer this question. Obviously there are uh, a lot of new technologies that are trying to avoid certain kind of fraud that is happening. Um, simple things like, I think the, uh, the newest Motorola um, Atrix phone has now fingerprint, uh, fingerprinting um, as the security lock on the phone to make sure that if you do get to the point where you have your credit card stored in your phone, um, not the moment you lose your phone, you're not completely uh, out there and uh, people start using uh, your credit cards. So I think there's simple things like that where they're trying to definitely increase the security of our phones itself. Um, obviously, a lot of the, the companies that in general also worked on security in the web are now focusing a lot on the mobile side of things. So far, we haven't heard much of viruses attacking our phones or um, fraud happening in that space. But that is, you know, it's. I'm not saying it's in inevitable that it's coming, but it's definitely something that could potentially happen. So I think there's a lot that, that is happening actually right now. Um, talking about privacy, um, I have to say when the whole location-based applications and offerings came out, I was very skeptical to be fair. Um, I would have never thought that people would just easily check in and share their location. And I know there have been a lot of advocacy uh, groups out there, like pleaserobme.com, where they had this great site up and showed how easy it was to actually find out when you check in through those location-based applications, people actually know that you're not at home and you almost like open the door for them to visit you and take whatever they like. So it's interesting to see that there is a whole generation of people actually that don't seem to care that much about that, which is shocking to me. Um, and then obviously, I think Facebook and Foursquare and, and all of those location-based services are obviously trying to put privacy barriers in there so you can really pick who you're sharing your location with. Um, have we figured out a perfect solution? I don't think so. But uh, especially with the bills circulating now in our government, we'll see where we have to even speed up that process in that regard. All right, I have, uh, yeah? B2B, so the question is what are my thoughts on, on the B2B space? I think the B2B space has taken quite a while to pick up in mobile, but I think especially now with the powerful smartphones we have and the tablet devices that I do count as mobile devices, um, it's picking up in a tremendous way. Um, and, and that's twofold. On the one hand, you have obviously the productivity aspect of things. Now, I've, I've just recently seen um, one of our construction workers was jumping into a, main, a manhole with an iPad, actually, where he had his whole schedule and, and his whole like, plan on what he had to change on his iPad, actually. So things like that we will see more and more. Uh, we've seen the medical industry has made some humongous headways in that space where doctors are now really having access to the patient files wherever they are when they're walking around in a hospital. So I think in that space, there's a lot of this, you know, these kinds of apps and, and support that will happen um, in that area. But then on the advertising side of things, um, I just recently um, read a study where we see that decision makers um, in some of the you know, big companies are so heavily connected and so heavily reliant on their mobile devices that it's now actually a viable space for people to advertise and really communicate their products um, to, to some of those decision makers. And I'm sure Tony will uh, maybe can answer some of those questions as well. So I, one last question. Um, 
Um, I think it's happening already. Uh, we, we had a great uh, partner in, uh, for example, ShopStyle. I'm not sure how familiar you are with, with them. They're obviously an affiliate network of uh, retailers. And they have developed their own mobile solutions to make sure that they are present where consumers do want to interact and where they do make buying decisions or where they're researching products. Um, and they're basically using it in a, in a very same way how they would use the web, for example. So we've seen that, that uh, some of the affiliate networks are picking up on that and then almost like doing the same thing that they're doing, uh, doing online. All right, now I would like to welcome uh, Tony Nethercutt from Mojiva up here. Uh, they are the sponsors of this session and I'm very, very happy to have you here and uh, we'll uh, move that over to you. Thank you. Did you know she was on a box? I don't get the box. <laughs> I want to be six five. And is this on? Test. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. And I want to buy that Ferrari. I just want somebody else to pay for it on my phone. How do I get that to happen? Log on. Go online. And get someone else to pay. <laughs> um, we are Mojiva. We are a mobile ad network, not an affiliate network. Um, but we'll talk about ads and how that works. Since we're at ad tech, I think it's a good thing to segue into the advertising part of that. Um, so like any ad network, our job is to bring large scale opportunity to the mobile space. So we connect you as advertisers, as marketers, to people that are on their cell phones surfing the mobile web and or in applications and give you a chance to reach them. In our case, nine out of 10 people surfing the web on their phone using an application in the US we can reach on a monthly basis. So it makes it interesting, it's got scale. Second part is big ideas. We're gonna focus mostly on that today and mostly on the rich media uh, trend that is coming to mobile. So just like desktop got kind of reinvigorated uh, by the notion that you could run really cool ads, uh, that is coming to mobile in a big way. If you want to reach scale and you want to have your creative work, it's best to have it targeted. So that's uh, a big part of our play, as well as the fact that once we've run advertising for you as a marketer, um, just like uh, Visa said earlier today, you want to know what worked. Did what you put in the field, a field actually do what you wanted it to do? One of the easiest things to track is the clicks. Uh, a company out there called Ground Truth um, measures the mobile space and one of the things that they measure is the number of clicks that are taking place on the mobile web. Um, in our case we happen to be number three behind Millennial Media number one and the combined ad mob Google number two. I had the good fortune of running sales and be uh, beginning the ad program at ad mob and we sold to Google uh, last year uh, and this year um, I'm taking what I learned from that space and coming to mobile uh, with Mojiva and one of the big reasons why I'm doing that is because of something we're starting called the Creative Alliance. A number of the other players in the space that do creative, as far as networks and or opportunities for you, require you to work with them exclusively on their platforms, which limits creativity. We're going out mobile web um, and also doing some in-app, but we're really trying to broaden that so that you as marketers can create once and run in as many places as possible. So what is that and why? Uh, we believe that rich media is changing the way that audiences look at things on the web. Uh, Tina mentioned Steve Jobs doing a great thing with Apple in terms of creating iAd was one of the things they did. Closed system, but the good thing is it brought marketers' attention big time to mobile and running ads on mobile. We're helping you engage. Part of our reason for being is to help you reach that audience with things um, that are um, cool to use, cool to play with, uh, extend your brand, and we're helping you navigate the various partners that we're gonna talk about in a second and see what they do. 
So you'll see on this creative reel that we're going to show that Rich Media has come to mobile. Stick with it. It's about two minutes long. We show you a lot of variety of devices, a lot of devi variety of ad formats, and a lot of different marketers using mobile. Try and talk you through some of the examples as we go. So we've partnered with a number of people that we have seen their work and we know that it's fantastic. Seltra being one of the companies in the alliance. In this case, an ad for Volvo where you open the ad and you can play within the ad like it's a virtual showroom. Crisp wireless. Example being on an iPad, so cross devices. We just went from one device to a whole different platform. This one for ESPN. I wonder, someone who has been in the space in the PC world for a long time coming to mobile. Various ads, expandables on top of the page. Again, another iPad example. Gold spot, relatively new player, mobile only player. In this case, a targeted ad that happens to be in Espanol. Fluent. Another new player in the mobile space, in this case, ad for Nissan where you can interact with it and vote. Point Reach doing a lot of great work for Microsoft including Bing, interactive game where you get to play the game on your phone. The Vision Air Group used them quite a bit, in fact these two ads were created when I was at AdMob, you'll see one for Jaguar one for Fast and Furious. This was done two and a half years ago. So the trend in mobile rich media is not brand new. It has been out there. Sprout, both a platform as well as they can help do the creative, in this case for Nike. Point Roll, another player that's been around for a number of years in the PC space. Again, another tablet example. So those, you saw the partners, um, TVG, Fluent, Goldspot, iWonder, Seltra, Point Roll, Chris, Sprout, and Point Reach. Our job is to engage with you, help you speak to the people at these companies, figure out what you want to do, and get it done. We can take an active role in helping manage it, or we can simply introduce you to these companies as being best of breed for what you want to do. Pretty cool. But the best way for you to figure out what to do for your brand is to book a workshop with us. So it's not just the what, it's the how. We're going to put you in touch with these folks. We can bring them into your place of work, to your agency, to your uh, offices if you're a marketer. Uh, help you brainstorm and help you get a hands-on exposure to this. Um, Tina's uh, company, AKQA, which you heard mentioned uh, several times today, they got a lot of shout outs in the opening keynotes, um, is one of the first agencies to have us in. They already do mobile. Tina knows what she's doing every day. So can you imagine uh, what you can learn if Tina's already well down the path and she's having us in to do this workshop, uh, as uh, you guys can learn a great deal from that too. Um, the gentleman that we've hired to uh, spearhead our um, ambitions in this regard is Jack Hallahan. Jack's up in the front. Jack also worked again, shout out for AKQA. Um, Jack was at AKQA. Um, he's based here in San Francisco, but he travels all over the U.S. evangelizing mobile for us. He was at a really cool company uh, called Moby TV, also Jagtag OneCast, where he was one of the pioneers. In fact, Jack has a patent for mobile advertising. Um, pretty cool thing, not one of those things that I have, um, but something that you can have so that you can take it with you today is if you write down this URL, m.mojivamca.com, all the ads you saw in that reel are available on this mobile site so that you can take it, show it, share it. You heard a lot about sharing during the Visa presentation today, so we've put it on the phone so you can look at the examples at your leisure. and, and uh, email the URL for this site uh, to your friends and your colleagues. 
It's also available on uh, a slightly larger format on the, the PC. We're not, uh, not using that, so you can see a different version of it, all the partners. Um, and with that, I'll go to a quick quiz. So who is leading our charge? What's the guy's name for the Creative Alliance? Anybody? Jack Callahan. We have a winner. Come get your prize. This is a branded Mojiva power map, by the way. So pretty cool thing. Charge your phones. Next. Um, name one of the Creative Alliance partners. Right here in front. It's your front row. Point roll. Point roll. Can you catch? What's that? Can you catch? Um, don't want to get sued if the guy can't catch. Um, uh, what's the Creative Alliance URL? Either one of them. A little harder. M.MojivaMCA.com. Other than saying Mojiva incorrectly, I still have to give it to you because I think we know what you meant. Um, so nice job. I won't throw this one that far. I'll leave it up here. I'm good at after. Okay, so here's all the ways to connect with us. Throughout the U.S., I run um, the marketing team. I run the sales team. I run the biz dev teams for our network. Throughout the U.S., if you're not here in the Bay Area, contact me and I'll get you to the right person. Jack runs the Creative Alliance. You've got his email there. If you want to schedule uh, something with Jack to come into your place of business, first three people that do this today will give you three more power mats. So email Jack, schedule to come either, either into your agency or to your place of work. Um, Tim Kelly runs ro both the brand team for us in the West as well as the performance team throughout the US. Any performance marketers in the crowd? Any guys that are interested in performance marketing and mobile? Tim Kelly, tk at mojiva.com. And if you're from the Los Angeles area, we just hired a long, young lady down there to run uh, LA for us named Carrie Coffee. She's spectacular. See coffee at mojiva.com. And here again, if you didn't write it down, uh, thank you for doing that. It will work if we type in mojivamca.com without the M, right? It'll sniff. So if you forget and type in mojivamca.com on your cell phone, we know you're on a cell phone and we'll send you the right place. Um, with that, that's it for us. Thank you very much. And remember Mojiva.